there are a number of dietary supplements that have been shown to be helpful in patients with ulcerative colitis, and I call these evidence-based first-line dietary supplements. What's interesting is that none of these, with one exception, is helpful in patients with Crohn's disease. They've been studied, and the results in Crohn's patients are, for the most part, there's no benefit. These include omega-3 fatty acids, probiotics, and prebiotics or symbiotics. Clinical trials of fish oils and ulcerative colitis go back to the 1980s, and they were started at Washington University in St. Louis. These are pretty high doses, and I remember talking to Dr. Stenson, who was the lead researcher when I understood that these were going on before they'd been published back in, I think it was 1985 or 86, and I said, well, do your patients really tolerate high doses of fish oil? He said, yeah, we don't have any side effects, which was pretty amazing because the most common side effect of taking high dose fish oils is diarrhea. Roughly five and a half grams of omega-3s from fish oils, so that's EPA plus DHA, which are the two major omega-3s, had been shown to decrease symptoms of ulcerative colitis and to decrease the levels of an inflammatory mediator called leukotriene B4 after 12 weeks in patients with ulcerative colitis. In proctocolitis, that same dose improved the histologic score when compared to placebo. A slightly lower dose of omega-3 EFAs was shown to reduce the drug requirements in active ulcerative colitis and enhance the ability of 5-ASA derivatives to maintain remission. So unless not tolerated because of diarrhea, I always include fish oils in my initial treatment of ulcerative colitis. There was a very interesting study that might explain why patients with ulcerative colitis respond to fish oils and patients with Crohn's disease don't. Um, and basically these researchers took biopsies of patients with inflammatory bowel disease and they looked at the effect on evidence of inflammation in the tissues and they added the fish oil in tissue culture. Omega-3s had a much more pronounced anti-inflammatory effect in the tissue that had been removed from ulcerative colitis patients as opposed to Crohn's disease patients. The bacterial probiotics that have been the most studied it's a proprietary mixture of several strains of lactobacillus and bifidobacteria with one strep strain added to it called VSL3. Some studies have indicated that VSL3 can induce remission in up to 50% of patients with mild to moderate ulcerative colitis and can prevent the relapse of pouchitis. VSL3 has also been shown to enhance the efficacy of 5-ASA derivatives for the induction and maintenance of remission. Another probiotic called Culturel, which is a single organism, Lactobacillus rhamnosus GG, which comes from Finland, was shown to delay the development of pouchitis during the first three years after colectomy. Bacterial probiotics do not help patients with Crohn's disease. All of the studies that have looked at these in Crohn's patients have shown no, be no benefit. That doesn't mean that there won't be a random patient with Crohn's disease who experiences benefit from them, but it certainly is very low down on my list with Crohn's patients. And I actually have seen patients with Crohn's disease who got worse with probiotics. I remember about 25 years ago, there was a study that the Mayo Clinic published looking at the intestinal bacterial flora of patients with Crohn's disease who went into remission on an elemental feeding diet. And the main change they found was that the number of lactobacilli dropped pretty dramatically with the induction of remission by that dietary, dietary means. Uh, I don't think that probiotics should be a reflex part of the treatment of patients with Crohn's disease at all. They need to be used really carefully. Now, probiotics plus prebiotics create this new nutraceutical category called symbiotics. Prebiotic is a substance that uh, specifically encourages, that it's a form of carbohydrate that's not digested. It act, sort of acts like fiber. It encourages the growth of specific bacteria in the colon, not all bacteria. The probiotic that has been studied in conjunction with prebiotics is Bifidobacterium longum in the controlled studies. And there was a study in which FOS or fructooligosaccharides 
plus B longum for four weeks, produced endoscopic improvement and histologic improvement compared to placebo. There was also a study in which B longum was added to psyllium fiber for four weeks. And there was a reduction in C-reactive protein of 76% and an improvement in quality of life. Neither agent alone was effective, and I think that's important, that neither the psyllium nor the probiotic worked by itself. It was the combination that was needed. There is one probiotic that has been shown to help patients with both Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, and this is a yeast, Saccharomyces boulardii. It's interesting to me that S. boulardii actually helps patients with Crohn's disease because on a culture plate it looks just like Saccharomyces cerevisiae, baker's yeast, but it has very different uh, physiologic effects and immunologic effects. Its presence in the colon has been shown to interfere with NF-kappa B signaling. NF-kappa B is sort of at the top of the chain in the inflammatory cascade. It also promotes an anti-inflammatory mediator called PPAR gamma. The 5-ASA derivatives also have this among their unheralded effects, enhancement of PPAR gamma. There was a study in which it induced remission of up to 68% of patients who had not responded to 5-ASA derivatives. In Crohn's disease, it reduced diarrhea and the Crohn's disease activity index within two weeks, reduced the six-month relapse rate by 84% when added to mesalamine. I had mentioned that there may be nutrient deficits which contribute to the development of inflammatory bowel disease. And there are actually two that have been described in ulcerative colitis. And I mention this research because I, th I find it to be very exciting and I think may lead to novel treatments. Uh, although they're not, they haven't really been tested in this country as yet. I had mentioned butyrate, butyric acid, a short chain fatty acid produced in the colon by bacterial fermentation. It supplies 70% of the energy for the lining of the colon. Now in patients with ulcerative colitis, the ability to utilize butyrate, butyrate oxidation, is severely impaired. This produces a state of starvation of the colonic mucosal lining, which then produces the kind of superficial colitis that is characteristic of ulcerative colitis. Researchers in India described a defect in energy metabolism of butyrate in the mitochondria of cells that was specific for ulcerative colitis. Basically, in order for the colon to utilize butyrate, there are five mitochondrial enzymes that are needed. And the fifth of these, an enzyme called uh, acetoacetyl-CoA thiolase, is markedly defective in the mitochondria of the colon of patients with ulcerative colitis when compared to patients with Crohn's disease or a control population. What's especially fascinating about this is that this is not a genetic disorder. If you take n normal colon cells and you add hydrogen peroxide, you can produce the same 84% decrease in activity of this enzyme. And if you take the cells from patients with ulcerative colitis, and you add what are called sulfhydryl self groups, that is antioxidants, and acetylcysteine would be an example of that, or glutathione, uh, or lipoic acid, or other substances of that type, you can restore the activity to normal. So this is the result of oxidative damage to the colon. Begs the question of what produced that oxidative damage, but it is likely that this plays an important role in ulcerative colitis. Now, there is an immunologist in Florida who has put together something called the free radical initiation theory of inflammatory bowel disease and is attempting to put together uh, antioxidant therapies. There are three studies that have shown that substances that enhance mitochondrial function may benefit patients with ulcerative colitis. This is still very preliminary, but NAC, 800 milligrams per day, can improve the response to mesalamine. Mesalamine itself is an antioxidant. A form of propionyl L-carnitine, which is 
a substance that enhances mitochondrial function, was studied in Russia, and was shown as add-on therapy to improve response to treatment in patients with ulcerative colitis. And vitamin A, given as a rectal suppository, improved ulcerative proctitis. And there is more information on the website of the Foundation for Integrative Medicine, it's mdheal.org, and at a website called pilladvice.com, which I created to deal with drug supplement interactions.